light in the darkness. Oh my God. Sing it one more time. One more time. Would you lift your voice? Let's sing this as a heavenly choir to the Lord today. Say, you're a way maker. Way maker, miracle worker. Your promise keeper. Light in the darkness. Say, oh my God. That is who you are. If you have found him to be that at some point in your life, would you just love him one more time all across this place today? Lord Jesus, I thank you for being a miracle worker, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. We have welcomed you here today, and I am thankful you have welcomed the presence of God. Uh, in our midst today. God is definitely here. Tell your neighbor, say, I feel God in the house today. Praise God. Praise God. You can be seated just a moment today, and I've got uh, a little bit of an introduction here today, but I want to say a thank you to my wife and sister Courtney uh, Thurbush for doing this stage. Everything looks great today, and I appreciate them taking that on themselves. They've done a wonderful job, and uh, I appreciate all the help that goes into uh, making days like today possible. These days don't just happen. There's a lot of planning that goes into those days, and I want to give honor also to my wife, a great mother today, as uh, she had organized that first 30 minutes of the service today, and uh, I love her dearly. And uh, I was able to see my mom for a moment this morning uh, as they, they try to make things fair. This is the way they've always parented, folks. They tried to make things fair. And, and uh, last year they was with us on Mother's Day and was with Jared on Father's Day. I didn't remember that. I didn't remember which one they was here or there. But Dad remembers. I'm telling you, he's got a memory. And uh, Dad said, now Seth was with you all on Mother's Day, so we're going to go to Union City for Mother's Day and be home on Father's Day. I said, that's fine. I had forgotten which one they had been here, but uh, I appreciate them. I was able to see my mom. And I will say this, we don't just give you the evening off because of what all we've put in the morning service, okay? We give you this evening to make sure you honor your mother. Um, if your mother has passed on, get down the picture albums, the homemade movies, something that you can remember that mom by if the grave is not far away and you can go out there we encourage you do that because this day is about honoring the mother that God put into our lives and where would we be today without our moms and directions and instruction in our lives and I'm thankful today for godly mothers that are even in this building and we're not done honoring moms today um, you know there's a lot of now this is going to be real profound and you probably didn't know this today but there's a lot of differences between men and women and how they operate um, a man is a person that if a woman says, never mind, I'll do it myself, what does he do? He lets her. A woman's if a person, if she says to a man, never mind, I'll do it myself, and he lets her, she gets mad. A man is a person who if a woman says, never mind, I'll do it myself, and he lets her, and she gets mad, and he says, now what are you mad about? A woman's a person who, if she says to a man, never mind, I'll do it myself, and he lets her, and she gets mad, and he says, now what are you mad about? She says, if you don't know, I'm not going to tell you, you know. <laughs> oh, my. That is an unknown source because I don't think anybody wanted to put their name to that, but it is the truth. It is the truth today. I read a story sometime back. It was in the digital version of a Reader's Digest, and it was a story involving a woman who wrote of the day when her last child left home for college, and her husband was sitting there resting on the couch, and uh, she easily removed his glasses and said, you know, honey, she's trying to be real sweet, you know. Without your glasses, you still look like the handsome young man I married. And he, you know us, men, we struggle sometimes in this romantic area, you know. And he said, you know, honey, without my glasses, you still look pretty good too. Lord have mercy. <laughs> In all honesty, can you put a price tag on a mother? You can't. Um, and someone recently said that for all the stay-at-home moms and all that they do, her working value is about $131,000 a year. I think all of us in this room would say, you know, that'd be pretty good to make that in a year's time. It's a fairly good wage until you consider there's some things you can't put a price tag on. Like mom kissing that boo-boo, priceless. Making the family a special meal that they all like. Even the restaurant don't try that. You can place your individual order at the restaurant. But mom knows how to make a meal that everybody likes. That's priceless, folks. Moms will get up during the night for feeding or illness. It's priceless. Searching the entire house for a gerbil. <laughs> Moms will do that, you know. It's priceless. 
cheering enthusiastically from the sidelines as Junior has just struck out. But Mom is going to cheer that son on, you know. Baking cookies for the afternoon snack, giving a hug, a smile, a word of encouragement. There are some things that moms, we cannot put price tags on. Indeed, you are priceless. If you would, I'm going to have you stand one more time today before uh, we get into the word of the Lord. Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. Thank you to all of our guests who are here today. Your children are having a great time in the back. You know what? They're, they're focusing on a Mother's Day story today. I've never preached from Brother Donnie, but I might next year because it's a good story for this time of year. There was a widow woman who had just lost her son and they're in a funeral procession. And Jesus looks at this mom and love pushes him to raise her son from the dead. What a story to study on Mother's Day. And these kids are going to be learning about that today and how that God loves them just like he loves their mom and how he's going to reach in their lives. Genesis, Matthew chapter 1, Genesis, Lord. This is the genesis of Jesus' genealogy, but uh, Matthew chapter 1. This is the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Reading from the NIV today, Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah, and his brothers. The reason I read from the NIV kind of tells it in more of a story form, and sometimes in these genealogies it's hard to understand all the begats. So I'm going to try to bring that to where we can understand it today. Judah, the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Everybody say Tamar. Perez, the father of Hezron. Hezron, the father of Ram. Ram, the father of Amenadab. Amenadab, the father of Nashon. Nashon, the father of Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Everybody say Rahab. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Everybody say Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse. Jesse, the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, who was, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Anybody know who that is? Bathsheba. Everybody say Bathsheba. So here Matthew presents one leg of Christ's earthly family tree. He begins with Abraham, the father of the faithful. And he descends through the balconies, each filled with 14 generations. And finally he arrives at Jesus Christ in Matthew 1. Now in the upper balcony we find mention of four women who were ancestors of Jesus Christ. And I had you repeat them with me. Tamar, Ruth. Rahab and Bathsheba. And I thought of these women in the upper, uh, upper balcony when I read a question. I was reading in a Christian magazine this week, and it asked the question, Can my mother see me even though she's in heaven? Now, normally on Mother's Day, I sing the praises of mothers who are with us. But today, I realize and I feel the pain of people that maybe you're not able to go to lunch with your mom today because she's passed on and she's already went to her heavenly reward. And so I talked to dad yesterday at lunch. We took mom out for Mother's Day lunch yesterday because they were not going to be here today. So we spent some time with them. And I said, Dad, I don't know if I've ever preached from this passage before. And this is kind of where I'm going. He said, that's interesting. He said, you know, we don't usually think of that. But today, if you would permit me just to recall the mothers that maybe are no longer with us, and I want to kind of help us to understand what we're doing today is going to leave an impact upon the children that we leave behind should the Lord tarry. And so we're going to approach this from a little different vantage point today than I ever have. I want to preach to you with this subject, Mom in the Balcony. Mom in the Balcony. Now, I'm not meaning that in, in, in the sense that She's the only one that's cheering us on. But even after they leave this life, I think there is scripture that would, uh, would tend to support, and we're going to go into this today, that mom is rooting for you to live for God and to do things that God would have you to do. And so there is a mom in the balcony. Let's pray. Jesus, help me to do a good job today. Help me, Lord, to be able to convey what I feel you've placed upon my heart to share with every mother in this building, every person really here today for us to be encouraged. And Lord, let it be an uplifting time. If there are those in this building today that their mother has passed on, let this word encourage them today, I pray. Let your spirit sweep this house, I ask, and do a great work as we do, Lord, your work in this place today. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. You can be seated today. God bless you. And don't leave early because you'll leave without getting your gift and there's a couple extra gifts that sister wilkerson has found and she's going to give those out today as well and so we're going to do that in the closing of the service and then every mom here that has a child in sunday school they've got something for you as well so we it may look like we're almost done but we're really not we've still got a little more to do so i'm going to hurry and preach and get out of the way today because i don't want to be in between you and lunch or you're in between you and your kids either one i found either one of those are dangerous places to stand and so i'm going to hurry and do this today the famed evangelist dwight moody once told a story about when he was a young boy and he was walking through a field 
And there he met a man who was weeping rather than working. And the man told Moody a strange story. He said, when he left home, his mother read to him the words of Matthew. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. So he ignored her words, thinking that he could seek everything he wanted in life and then find God. One Sunday he went to church and the preacher preached from his mother's text. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. He thought, you know what, mom must have wrote this minister and told him I was coming and asked him to preach on this. And so he went to another church the next week and the preacher read the same text. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. He began to think, my mom didn't write now. I'm, I'm wondering if her prayers aren't chasing me, you know. They're following me. And so he decided, I'm not going to think about it. Matter of fact, I'm going to stay away from the church house. I'm not even going back to church. And so for years he did that. But then he told the young uh, boy, Dwight uh, Moody, he told him, he said, my mother died, but her words kept coming back to my mind. And even after she passed, he said, I just said, I got to go to church. And so if the story ended there, it would be a comforting story of the power of prayer. But the story sadly doesn't stop there. The the man weeping in the field told the young boy, uh, Mr. Moody, that he found his way back to church, but he could not find his way back to God. Now, that's sad. Years later, you know, Moody becomes this great evangelist, traveling preacher, you know, a game very popular for his sermons. And so he said, you know what, I'm going to go back to that town and I'm going to look for that man. And they said, oh, yeah, you want to know where Joe is? He's in the insane asylum. And a worker told Moody that the man would sit in there and he would do nothing from the moment that his, his mom died and, and, and he tried to go to church, get his life right, just never could and, 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 and never would find his way back to the Lord. They said all he would do is he would sit at the front door and as soon as somebody would walk in the front door, he'd take that old bony finger out and he'd point at him and he'd say, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. I began with this sobering story. Most, most of the time I, don't end, I, I end with something like this, but uh, I began with this story today for a reason. A sainted mother does not always ensure that your child's going to be saved. Every person individually must find themselves an altar and give their life to God. But I also see in this story a man that never got away from the prayers of his mama. And while you have children around you, I encourage you mamas today, you pray as never before and pray that God allows them to be all that they can be. For when a mother is gone from this life, her prayers linger on to shape. You got the 10, the 20, any scores? No. There we go. One of those kids getting ready to get a good talking to from my wife. You saw her walk out. The mother just kicked in. Boom. Here she goes. She just walked in with the culprit right there. There it is. They got a kick out of that online probably too, didn't they? Well, let's try to get spiritual now. Four women. All that build up for nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Four women are mentioned in the Old Testament. Sunday school teachers going to get a kick out of that too because I said, I want you all to go back and watch this online after we get done today because some of the things I was going to say, I hate they have to miss today. So they're going to get a kick out of that one as well. Four women are mentioned in the old opening chapter of the New Testament. And you would think that if women from the Old Testament were going to be mentioned, you know, these would be perfect people, Brother Edward. You'd think they'd almost have halos hanging over their head and be so angelic that they lived a perfect life. But the women in Christ's lineage, you would think they would be a cut above the rest and crowned and, and, and superb examples, yet that is not the case. The Holy Ghost would, and the Bible talks about all scriptures given by inspiration of God, and, and they would write as they were moved on by the Holy Ghost. And so when Matthew would write, the Holy Ghost would impress him, you need to describe four women who are very human. Tamar is a widow who posed as a prostitute to seduce her former father-in-law. Rahab was a prostitute who hid two Israelite spies. Ruth was a Moabite who followed her former mother-in-law back to Bethlehem. And then Bathsheba was Uriah's wife and later the wife of King David. All four of these women are united 
in Christ's balcony, so to speak. Maybe heaven wants us to know something. And I believe, and I'm going to preach a three-point sermon today, real quick today. I do believe, first off, that God wants us to realize that His balcony has room for human mothers. I'm glad today my wife was transparent with you and, and told you there's times that as parents, this isn't just a mother's job, but I'll just say this. There are times as parents we have to go to our kids and say, I didn't handle that right. If you're not honest with your kids, they're going to look at you as the biggest hypocrite. And so we have to realize, you know what? God, when he called me into the church, he knew who I was and he knew who I was not. The idea of a sainted mother is sometimes helpful, but most of the time it's not quite exact. I have never met a saint that was not human first. And we got to watch ourselves. And as pastor, I, I have frequently uh, attended to situations where life and death would mingle. I, I'm often at homes and hospitals and nursing homes where someone passes into the next life. And before the funeral takes place, it's common to hear people reminiscing about that past loved one. It's actually therapy, Brother Seaton. I found that when I go to those visitations, I need to give myself some time. I don't need to be rushed. If I'm going to be rushed, I'd rather not go because I know what's going to happen. They're going to pull me to the side, somebody in the family, He's going to pull me to the side and they're going to start telling me stories about the individual. It's a good medicine. It helps them to get through this time of grieving. And then if you sit there long enough, this, this is what I enjoy. You sit there long enough, you know, everybody's got this outer core that you see, you know. But if you'll sit there long enough, they're eventually going to tell you things you didn't know. You get beyond all the nice pleasantries and they're going to tell you about the times and the funny stories of something somebody said or the times where maybe th this individual got a little upset at them because they broke their favorite coffee cup or something like that. And then they start talking about the mistakes maybe the person made. And from the same fountain of memories that they just told me all the good stuff, here comes some stuff that might not be so good, but yet it, it's, there's some that's helpful. There's some things that may be hurtful in their life. The glad, the sad, but it's a good thing to know that in the middle of our humanity deity can still dwell that while some labor under a concept that their lives have to be picture perfect to have a good impact I'm here to encourage us today that just because you've made a mistake or two does not mean that you're not impacting those kids in your life for the good God can be found in the company of the fallen and the needy oh thank God but can I remind you on this Mother's Day 2018 that you do not arrive in heaven's balcony merely because you are human. You get there because you reach through and beyond your humanity and you lay hold upon the eternal. Come on, you're not going to get to heaven just because you simply were born. You're going to get to heaven because you were born again. I'm thankful today for an earthly mama, but I'm glad when the Spirit overshadowed me and I began to speak in another language, I was entering into a different dimension. I was human when I came to God. I'm still human trying to live for God. I got to crucify this flesh daily, but I'm still making mistakes along the way. But the prophet said, he didn't say if I fall. He said there's going to come times in my life where I make mistakes and I have boo-boos and spirituality, but when I fall, I've made up in my mind, I shall arise. I'm not going to stay down because I made my mistake. I'm going to get up. I'm going to keep living for God because God still has room for humans in his balcony. Oh, somebody shout praise the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, it's all right, you're human. Now, I'm not, I'm not advocating you to walk out of here and sin on purpose. I'm not giving you a right to sin. But the Bible says that if we sin, we need to remember we have an advocate with the Father. A God that is righteous. A God that is just. He's not overlooking your problems. He's offering you mercy and grace. He's saying you, you can take advantage of this. You, 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 you're not misusing or abusing, but you are in the using of the grace of God. And so each of the four women in heaven's balcony, they were human. Somebody say they were human. But they excelled because of what they did with their lives and how maybe these mothers would handle situations they faced. I want you to take a second glance at these ladies. Now, I pointed out the obvious a while ago and their backgrounds, but Tamar, not only was she 
a, a person that you would not want really to follow in that example. She also, though, had a good side that ended up happening. She trusted the law of the kinsman redeemer, and Judah would later call her righteous. You mean a prostitute called righteous? Yes, that's what happens when you come in contact with the kinsman redeemer. My Bible says he makes all things new. Rahab turns her back on Canaanite gods. And she declares Jehovah to be the one true living God. And she would weave a scarlet ribbon of hope through an upstairs window. And we find in scripture she found salvation. Ruth left cursed Moab and its false gods with a cry for her mother-in-law who was wanting to get back to the land of God. And she said, your God is going to be my God. I'm going to forsake those other gods and I'm going to grab hold of the one true living God. Bathsheba trusted in the words of Nathan the prophet and she gave birth to two sons even after her mistake. And they're both found listing of the Messiah's lineage in Luke chapter 3. You find she had a son by the name of Nathan. I have to think she might have named him after that prophet who gave her the promise. (laughs) And then in Matthew chapter Chapter 1, you'll also read Solomon was also a a, a daughter, uh, or son rather, of Bathsheba. Four Gentile women made their way into the balcony of Christ because they made up their minds that my future is something to be seized. Every one of them formed a link in the golden chain, if you will, a rung in the heavenly ladder, a step on a celestial staircase, and each one of them was very human, and they were a mom that in heaven's balcony. And so mothers, when you feel your tempers may be getting a little short and you feel a little hurried and stressed oh you can take heart yes you are human but you're also a vital part of the kingdom of God and we can be encouraged by four human moms that understand there can be room for you in heaven's balcony even though you have human instincts but the question that prompted this message and I mentioned it in my introduction can my mama see me even though she's in heaven Maybe, let me tell you why it may be possible. Mothers, I believe that mothers watch from heaven's balcony, and I'm going to show you in Scripture. You know me better than I'm not just going to preach something without giving you a bunch of verses. So, Death is not an identity thief. Who you are before you die is who you are after you die. My Bible says you're going to be judged by the life you live here. So when I get to heaven, I'm still going to be Seth Wilkerson. In our text, four ladies we know through Scripture, Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, and Bathsheba, they're all dead, yet they still speak. When a mother who trusted God dies, we know her body goes to the grave, but her soul and spirit return to Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul says, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. For the Christian mother, death is not the ending, but just a relocation. An address change, if you will. They join the ranks of other mothers in heaven's balcony. I like that expression, heaven's balcony. That's why I'm using it today a lot. We say it like this. I lost my mother last year. But what we meant to say, she's not lost. She just got promoted. No entrance to the balcony, but through the front door, okay? So then in God's time, he elevates people to the balcony above. So what I am calling heaven's balcony is formally called the intermediate heaven. John says it this way. He says he saw this place, and he said there was an altar in heaven under which were the souls of martyrs in Revelation 6. Each seemed to know what was happening on planet Earth. Every one of them spoke to God, according to Revelation 6, about what was happening. Each was granted a white robe and told, you need to be patient for a short season, and you're going to be with them again. The intermediate heaven is filled with those who have won the battle. They are what the writer of Hebrews calls the just made perfect. Moses and Elijah once stepped from this place of the intermediate heaven to come to a place called the Mount of Transfiguration. Hundreds of years after their death. Let me stop here. Hundreds of years after the death of one and the other one's catching away because he didn't die. They spoke with Jesus about his coming departure. They had long since been gone. 
But both of them were fully aware of what was happening on the earth and what Jesus Christ's mission was going to be. He was going to die for the sin of the world. I want you to look at the words of Jesus in Luke chapter 15. He said, I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons that need no repentance. Stop right there. You, you're going to probably be sitting there saying, now, Pastor, you've always preached. The angels rejoice in heaven. It's there too. But it's in a different passage. He said, I say unto you, joy is in heaven. But look at verse 10. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God. Over one sinner that repenteth. You know what that tells me? Is when somebody comes to an altar and they start repenting. Heaven's watching. And not just the angels. Because he mentions the angels in verse 10. But I believe that those that are in heaven's balcony. That are cheering us on. Including the angels. When a soul turns to God. There's a party that's happening in heaven. The writer of Hebrews commands us. He said you run the race that is set before you. Because we run before a great cloud of witnesses. Oh, what a beautiful picture that the writer is painting for us. It's the imagery of a giant crowd encircling a huge stadium. And I'll show you a picture later of this. These witnesses who have gone before us surround us. They're cheering us on. They are encouraging us. So yes, pastor can believe from these and other scriptures that godly mothers who have gone before may witness God's unfolding planet or plan on this planet. Now what I'm saying now... That First off, before you take this, say, pastor's done hit his head and he don't know what he's talking about. Before you say something here, listen to me. I'm not saying that this permits us going and conversing with the dead. Come on. Come on. That is a practice that is clearly forbidden in Scripture. And it goes back to even the Hindus. You won't start talking about uh, 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 origins and all that kind of stuff. That stuff goes back to the origin of the Hindus. And let me also say this, neither does it permit us to worship those who have gone on before. Because there is only one, the Bible says, who is truly worthy of our worship, and that is Jesus Christ. So don't take pastor's words today and go out here and try to use it for your own benefit and say, well, now it's okay for me just to go and do this, that, and the other. I said all of that to say this, if your mother has been promoted to heaven's balcony, she is in a place of great joy today. Every time somebody repents, she's in on the shouting party. Nothing she sees or nothing she cannot see will diminish that joy. Now somebody said it this morning. I was talking to the teachers about it. And they said, oh my, so that means that, that, that not only is the Lord watching, but mama could be watching. I said, yeah, it does. But you know what? I also believe that they don't see the bad things. Because the Bible says God has dried their tears from their eyes. Now, you saw it today. A mama down here in a funny skit begins to tear up when she starts talking about her kids. God has the ability to remember. Everybody believe that? He's got the ability also to forget. Just as he can say to those who are not promoted in heaven's balcony, I never knew you. That, that doesn't mean he didn't really ever know them or, or be a part. He said, you know what? I'm having to forget you because you didn't remember me. But he's also able to grant the ability, I believe, to forget to those that have been promoted. What do you mean, Pastor? I believe God wipes the hurtful memories from those in heaven. And if you intend to meet your mama in heaven someday, and you plan to a promise that I'm going to apologize for all that I did wrong, there's going to be two things that's going to keep you from doing that. Number one, she won't remember it. And number two, you won't either when you get there. God will dry the tears. You know what would be a wonderful Mother's Day in heaven? is for somebody's mama that's been away from God to say on this Mother's Day, I'm going to make my commitment to God and say I'm going to live for God. I'm going to obey His word. I'm going to repent of my sin. I'm going to be baptized in Jesus' name. I'm going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to tell you today, I believe there is a mom in the balcony that is cheering for that to happen. That's telling you, Pastor, you need to preach today. You need to push as hard as you can. We don't know how many times they're going to be back in church, preacher. For those of us who haven't crossed the finish line. For those of us who perhaps haven't started the race. 
the mothers in heaven's balcony want you to know there's still room in heaven's balcony for you. It's a classic book called The Little Prince. I don't know if you've ever read it or not. The boy comes from another planet, <laughs> stands in a desert, looks up at the night sky, and he says, If you love a flower that lives on a star, it is sweet to look at the sky at night. All the stars are abloom with flowers. And I, I pulled that quote out of that book. When the world gets dark, remember this word of hope. There is still room up there for you. Three balconies filled with 14 generations carried the world to Jesus Christ. But from his entrance into the world unto today, it is for whosoever will. We read in John 19 verse 25, Now uh, near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. Oh, couldn't it be said of any godly mother today? She stands near the cross of Jesus Christ. And she says, look at this. This is for you. There is still room at the cross for you. Look at this picture. They're going to throw it up there for you today. Oh, it turned out better than I thought it would, Brother Heath. Thank you. This is a picture of what the original stadium in, in, in Rome would look like like back from Bible times now they're doing something different than the Olympics here in this picture but you can kind of get the picture and when you look at this it's so easy to imagine a crowd in a stadium cheering come on you can make it run if your mother has joined the crowd in God's balcony I believe that outside of Christ she's leading the crowd in encouragement the same one who gave birth to you is saying be born again the same one who taught you to walk is saying, come on, keep on moving. If you've got to crawl, crawl. If you've got to walk, walk. If you can run, run. Limp if you have to. Do whatever you can to make it where I am. I told you I'm not going to be long today. These teachers are going to wonder why in the world I close so early, but I'm closing today with this story. One time there was this boy named Michael. He was swimming in a small pond. It was near his family's house in southern Florida. And Michael's out there, you know, just he's done this many times, and so his mother's not thinking anything about it. It's a two-story house. She's up in the top of the house folding laundry and singing and just having a good day. She looks out the window, and she sees something has grabbed her son in that water and is trying to pull her underneath. And what she didn't know at that time was it was an alligator. Grabbed both legs of her son. Michael and began to try to pull him under doing that death roll. She heard the sloshing of the water and looks out and runs to him not thinking about what dangers are in there because you know mamas are going to take care of their kids and not worry about it. They'll you know act and then, and then ask later you know. So she jumps in the water, grabs her son and she sees the alligator has both of his legs in the mouth and she grabs a hold of his arms and begins to scream a promise or maybe you would say a prayer and say I will not let you go and she just kept saying that and pulling and by this point neighbors are out there going oh my god they've called paramedics, they've called the police we've got to have some help and so this tug of war ensues between a mother and they said this alligator weighed 400 pounds when this thing was done the mother ends up winning the battle inexplicably the alligator Josh we don't know what caused it other than maybe just an answer to her prayers but the alligator lets go and dives to the bottom of the pond giving her just enough time to get the boy out of the water and by that point paramedics are there and she drags her wounded and bleeding son up to the top of the hill and the paramedics begin to operate and work on him and move him to the hospital and he would go through several surgeries of replacing ligaments and, and, and f fractured bones that would have to be replaced and, and, and replacements of all kinds of things in his body and surgeries I I think they said it was somewhere from six to eight surgeries this young man would go through before he would actually start really being well again. And three months later, Michael gets his friend staying the night with him, Brother AC. He says, I want you to walk down to the pond with me. Now, I know how hard this can be because I had a dog that attacked me one time and I had 48 stitches in my mouth. And mom and dad, three days later, made me walk back out there and pet that dog again because they didn't want that dog to start feeling like it was the owner, you know. But this boy on his own, three months later, says, I'm walking back down to that pond again. Takes his friend with him and he says, hey, I want you to look at my legs. Starts showing him all the scars on his legs from where the alligator had been. The young man was like, my goodness, man. I didn't realize it had, it had gotten that far up on you. And they began to talk about it. And 
Next thing he knows, he sees Michael start rolling up his sleeves. He's like, good grief, I just thought the alligator bit your legs. The alligator did that too. He said, no, I wanted to show you these scars. These scars are from Mama. Where she grabbed a hold of my arms but would not let me go. He said, these scars I can glory in. Because these remind me of a love of a mama that cannot be taken away from me. Why do you say all that today, preacher? Would you stand with me today? Your promotion day may happen. I don't know if you'll be here when the Lord returns or not. But you've still got kids that are living. You ought to grab a hold of those kids with everything that you can spiritually. And say, I will not let you go. The enemy may have them for a time. He may be trying to pull them completely into the depths of the world. But you keep praying, Mama. You keep your hands on that child. And even after your promotion day, if that child is not yet in the church, he's still going to remember by the marks on his life. I said, there was a Mama that loved me. There was a Mama that cared for me. Listen to me. Don't listen to the lie that says you'll push him away. No, you keep holding on. You're not pushing them away. You're pulling them in. And when your promotion day comes, those marks stay on your children's lives. Brother Charles, I can't tell you how many people have come back to the Lord and say, my mama's not here today, but I remember hearing the prayer of my mama. I remember walking down the hall and hearing the voice of a grandmother who would pray for that son, that daughter, those grandchildren. God, just let them be saved. Paul would look at Timothy and say, Timothy, you didn't get here by yourself. Don't you forget, you had a praying mama and a praying grandmama that would not let you go. Oh, God. I don't want to let go too soon. I'm going to hold on to my kids with everything that I can. Would you bow your head with me right now, Father, in the name of Jesus? I feel your presence in this room today. I thank you, oh God, for your love that never fails. The love of parents that, Lord, will continue, will continue even beyond the grave. Prayers of parents, the marks of parents upon lives of their children. And I pray today, God, you would help us as parents in this room. Our children are not in this room today, but we're praying, God, help us to be truly that godly example, to not let them go. God, we are believing today that you're going to help us. Lord, you said in your word, her children will rise and call her blessed. Move in this place today. Inspire us, I pray. In Jesus' name. I am free because you said I am free. I am free no matter how I feel, no matter what I see. Your word is my authority. In every season of life So as for me and my house We're gonna be Would you sing that with us? Say, I am free, oh I am free because you said I am free If you know it, would you sing it with us? Say, I, I am free, free no matter how I feel No matter what I see Your word is my authority In every season I will stand up, I will stand up, and fight for my freedom. Oh, I will stand up, and take what belongs to me. So today it may not be perfect, I but I will worship. In my situation. Would you lift your hands in this building today and say, I will lift, I will lift my hand, I will lift my voice, declare I am free. As for me and my house, oh, as for me and my house, oh, as for me and my house, we're gonna be free. Gonna be I'm not gonna free. let go of my children. As for me, as for me and my house, as for me, as for me and my house, as for me and my house, we're gonna be free. I am free. I am free. Stand up and 
I'm gonna I keep my hands up and take what belongs oh, to me. Should, yeah. I will worship in my situation. I will lift my hands, lift my voice. Where I am free. Would you sing it for you in your house today? Say, as, as for me, me and my house. house. As for me. We're gonna, gonna be free. Oh yes, as for me and my house. Yes, as for me and my house. Oh, as for me and my house. We're gonna be. The Bible says you have the power of life and death in your tongue. I declare freedom for my family. I declare freedom for my home, and I declare freedom for my daughter. Freedom for my sons. I declare what your word has spoken. No matter what I feel or what I see, I declare every chain is broken. We're gonna be free. I declare freedom for my family. Oh, I declare freedom for my home. I declare freedom for my daughter. And I declare freedom for my sons. I declare what your word has spoken. No matter what I feel or what I see. And I declare every chain is broken. We're going to be Sing it one more time. I declare. I declare freedom for my family. I declare freedom for my home. I declare freedom for my daughters. I declare freedom for my sons. I declare what your word has spoken. No matter what I feel or what I see, I declare every chain is broken. We're going to be free. We're going to be free. Yes, we're going to be free. Sing it one more time. Give the Lord praise today. Come on, you ought to be able to declare those things in the Holy Ghost today. That son or daughter is not going to stay lost. They're going to be free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Would you lift your hands and let's thank the Lord for his presence in this house one more time. God, I love you. I thank you for your goodness to us, oh God, and your word today. Let us leave encouraged in the Holy Ghost. Let us leave encouraged by your spirit today, I pray. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. If you're thankful for the freedom that God can give, would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise one more time today? Praise God, praise God. They're going to be bringing our children back in today, and I know you've got your gifts and uh, that sort of thing, so we're going to let you give those out. And um, we also have a presentation from our children. You can be seated today. I'm sorry, I should have said that. You can be seated. It's so good to have all of our guests. I'll tell you what, let's give all of our guests a hand today. It's so good to have you with us. Normally, we have church on Sunday night. We start at 6 o'clock, and then our midweek service is Wednesday night at 7.15. And uh, we want you to know we're not having service tonight because of Mother's Day, encouraging you to spend some time with that mother. Uh, remember and honor that mother today. And I appreciate, again, all the hard work of my wife. And I'm going to get out of the way. I know we're getting close to lunchtime, and we've got 10 minutes to spare. Look at here. Uh, we was able to do she said she saves up for all year long for this one time and when I saw all those scriptures she was going to use today I thought man I may have to start giving her an extra time so we don't have to be here all afternoon but no I'm playing I love my wife appreciate all that she does uh, for this church works hard for this church but also our family and uh, a lot of times you don't see everything that she does she's good about trying to stay back in the back of the scenes and making me look really good so uh, I know you'd rather look at her than me, so I'm going to get out of the way. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. Praise the Lord. I do want to remind everyone in the foyer, as soon as you walk out these doors, look straight. There's a bake sale over there. And I know I don't, I know. John Satan said, oh, we didn't think about desserts this afternoon. I said, no, we didn't. We're going to have to get something. So there are a few desserts out there. I'll just go ahead and give you the prices. 
There's also more desserts they're putting out. Apparently some came in that needed to be refrigerated, so don't think, well, there wasn't much out there. Apparently they're having to get those too, so there's more cakes than what they thought. So what there is is there are a few small size cakes. They'll be $5 a piece. Pies will be $10 a piece, and large cakes will be $15 a piece. If you want to give more than that, you're more than welcome. This is going to our Mother's Memorial um, offering that we haven't said a whole lot about that, but that does provide, um, it does help our ladies' conference in Tennessee. It um, helps our home missionary pastors here in Tennessee. It also helps our um, missionaries overseas with household appliances that we take for granted. And um, it also goes to different ministries like uh, Tupelo Children's Mention and New Beginnings and things like that. So um, without further ado, I would like for all of our mothers, mothers, stepmothers, grandmothers, I would like for you all to come forward and grab you a flower pot. Take your pick. There are three different color pots and they all have a different color flower on them and a different color flower in them. Now these are uh, petunias. Come on, go ahead and get started. That's okay. Come on. These are petunias. We all like petunias, especially around Christmas time, right? Sister Shayla, we like petunias. And um, so uh, these are, they're already in some potting soil for you. Please feel free to go home, take them home, add some flowers to them, or put them in the ground, add some water to them. They need six hours of sunlight a day and watered twice a week. Okay, good. All right, um, and then as you as you have got your plant, please look on the bottom. There is two yellow stickers, but don't spill the dirt on your head. Hmm? <laughs> oh, I should yeah, I should have said that after everybody got theirs first, right? So there are two yellow smiley face stickers on the bottom. Again, please don't pour the dirt on your head. I might laugh. Not really, but I might. I was about to say, last night we had set these out and we were all, it looked all so pretty and I look over and Matthew had one of them just poured out all over the altar area. So I kept a vacuum right behind that door just in case it happened again today. <laughs> okay, do we have any yellow smiley faces yet? Sister Annette has a yellow smiley face and we have one more. Not this one. This one. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do this one. All right, Sister Annette, I will let you come take your pick first. We have Garden of Truth, a little devotional that's got seeds of truth from the Word of God. Or a little plaque that says, enjoy the little things in life. Don't we enjoy the little things? You know what? Sister Destiny doesn't got her plant, does she? Oh boy, Sister Annette, Did you pick one. Sister Destiny, just head on up this way. I'll, I can pick on her because this is her first Mother's Day. There's your plant and your little book. Thank you. <laughs> all right, let's give all of our mothers a hand. Thank you, mothers. Okay, the last thing that we'll do is, kids, do you have your cards ready? Find your mother, give your mother their cards, give them a big hug and a big kiss. And tell them one thing that you love, especially about your mama. <laughs> um, and I will apologize to the mothers. <laughs> I forgot that I was supposed to put a packet of seeds in here. So just pretend, okay? We're really good at pretending, aren't we? <laughs> All right. Okay, well, that's all I have for mothers. One more thing going today. And, again, we want to give honor uh, to my wife. And the Sunday School Department is wanting to do something for her today. So I'm going to let them go ahead and come in. And uh, they're going to wrap things up. She just thought this was the last thing we were doing this morning. In the Sunday School Department, we know that there's somebody who helps us get all of our stuff together. There's somebody that anytime anybody needs anything, who do they call? There's times that we call pastor and we call him out and it all, fall, a lot falls on the shoulders right here. 
And I don't think that even we realize that. So a lot of times we honor our pastor's wife as the church mother. She's been the church mother. She's the church nurse. She's, <laughs> she's done everything. She has kept my children for me. Um, different times I've had to have somebody come and help me at the last minute and I've taken my children to her and she's taking care of them. I've seen her mother every child in this, in this room. So we never, ever, ever want to take for granted what a blessing we have as a pastor's wife and a church mother. We appreciate you. Praise God. Yeah, they all signed this card and before I kick that over, yeah, I want to move that over. <laughs> Let's stand together today. Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers uh, in the building today. We appreciate you being here. Appreciate everyone that has had uh, something to do with this service. Again, don't forget the bake sale out there. Uh, and uh, we're still doing good. It's before lunch. So appreciate you being here. And uh, tell you what, why don't you just shake hands together today? We've had a beautiful spirit in this house. Don't want to dismiss that. Shake hands together. God bless you. Thank you for being here at Humboldt UPC today.